Morning. Welcome to BSM with Brandon and Sal. Um, let's start real quick and just kind of introduce ourselves for, for the audience and the viewers and give, you know, our age and a little bit of a, a background story. So, yeah, absolutely. Um, Sal Mara, I uh, lived in Long Island my whole life. 30 years old, youngest of four. Obviously, you know, Mike. <laughs> Very Lucky well. You. Oh, and Marcella. Um, Got a passion for soccer. As far as my career, I am in the insurance field, health insurance specifically, um, based out of Westbury, New York. I partnered with uh, my partner, Vincent, about seven years ago. And we're here now with 150 employees, agents, doing somewhere in the range of 50,000 enrollments a year. And uh, we specialize in Medicare products specifically. The reason I, I found such love and passion for that industry specifically was just um, the Medicare market. You know, these people are lost. You know, nobody knows what to do when they turn 65. They're getting so many calls, stuff in the mail. So it's rewarding, um, you know, hang up a call and uh, help somebody and they're, you know, the, the demographic that we're dealing with, they're on Social Security. They're making $1,000, $1,200 a month. So if their prescription's fucking $100 and you save them 10 you know, they're, they're in tears. Yeah. Um, <clears throat> so that was like the early part of, of my career that was rewarding. But now I'm, you know, VP of the company. And at, at this stage of my career, the rewarding part is <clears throat> helping, excuse me, helping, you know, individuals like, you and you know myself and and you um and the people around us make a career out of out of it for themselves and make money and you know that part is rewarding for me um but yeah that that's really it for me i mean i think you and i put this together to try to send a message to other young individuals across the country and let them know what what can be done that's it yeah. So, um, I'm Brandon Havrilla. We, I started as a DJ, um, back in like 2013, grew from that to be DJ and photo booth company. And it was just a hobby at that point. It wasn't, you know, anything, uh, that I saw as a long-term career. Um, beyond that, during the early years of my high school career, um, started really like taking off and building that. And I was like, this is kind of cool. I could, I could make this, you know, something. And at that point I started to get a lot of resistance from family and friends of just like, you know, DJ's a hobby, DJ's a hobby, DJ's a hobby. Like you're never going to make a career out of it. Like, okay, what do you really do? Like what, you know? And so that like gave me such a drive to now prove all of them wrong and be like, no, nah, I'm going to make a career in this industry now. And, um, that's when I really started to focus on the business. Um, I did two years of college for business and, and audio and then kind of got out of that just to, to focus on business and just grow the business. So since then, um, I'm the owner of Redmax Events, which is our main event company. We do a lot of corporate and, and private work. I have Redmax Products, which is a second company we started during the pandemic that we do large format, you know, printing and, and signage with. Um, and that's just another source of revenue, which I'm sure is going to be a topic, you know, down the line that we talk about on this podcast is kind of uh, multiple streams of income and, you know, making money and, and whatnot. So um, that's the second one. And then the third one, which is how we got to know each other. Um, I guess I own two and a half companies is a uh, Christmas experience company with your brother. So um, we started that this past year and we're looking forward to another season. So it's awesome. That's are, me. You, are you, I wanted to ask you this. Are you partners on the other events like the, the Grinch? And uh, so Grinch, we did actually partner up on this year as well. Cause it was like a new pop-up experience. Um, uh, Grinch one, uh, Alice in Wonderland. That those one. are his, his pop-ups. Okay. And um, so we, we come in as like a vendor if he needs us for, for printing, you know, Got signage it. and whatnot, but those are his. Yeah. So you, you had people telling you, you were just going to be a DJ. I, I had people telling me that I scam old people now. <laughs> now I'm, I'm like, well, I guess the scamming went good because yeah. <laughs> I'm doing all right. Yep, uh, yep. Actually, this came up yesterday. I was out um, for brunch for my, my wife's birthday, and somebody was like, yeah, I can't believe it. Remember we all used to make fun of you that you're scamming old people? I'm like, yeah, now look. I remember. <laughs> but uh, no, it's funny. You're not just a DJ, in case you didn't know. Right, right. <laughs> yeah, we've gotten that. And then through the years, as we've like 
navigated growing as as a company and business we've gotten where i've gotten specifically other titles of like when i got a mini golf course i was like the only one on the east coast apparently to own a mini golf course and it was a crazy thing and everyone would refer to me as like the mini golf specialist or the mini golf guy and that's what i was known for for like a solid year and then um now i'm getting a lot more like the print guy because i bought these large format printer machines and people are like oh you're just a print guy and I'm like, well, I guess the printing is working, like you said. Yeah. <laughs> Whatever it is, I guess it's working. So, um, so that's what brings us here. That's that's us. Um, let's kind of just t- mention briefly, I guess, what we're going for with this podcast, kind of why we wanted to to start it and do it, and and what they should expect from from future episodes. Yeah, I mean, for me, uh, like I said in the beginning, like if if one person hangs up the podcast and is just motivated to to start their day and just do something with their life i mean that that's that that's enough for me um i you know i i I did two years of college associate's degree my wife i've been telling my wife it's a bachelor's degree for like the last five years so now she has the uh the proof (laughs) but um i think it's that's another topic we'll talk about it's like you grow up and while you're growing up, your parents are talking about college, college, college. It's so like embedded in your head that unless you're, you know, in my opinion, unless you're going to be a doctor or you know exactly what you're going to do, um, college is a waste of time or not a waste of time, but yeah. there's alternatives. I love that. I, I love that you brought that up in the first episode too, because that's a very strong topic in my yeah. head, and uh, I'm excited to. I think we should make a full episode just about that too, because I feel you know same way of like colleges. I, I did a two year associates. After two years, I was done. I was like, yeah, I'm out, yeah. you know, um, and yeah, I, I agree. I think it, it's something <clears throat> that like our education system just doesn't, you know, doesn't push that there's an alternative. It's just like no, yeah. like you said, everyone is like college, college, college. So. Yep. Cool. Um, so yeah, I, I want to bring like, you know, a, a piece of value, but I don't want to, um, I don't want to give it like, we're not, we're not teaching in this podcast. Yeah. This is, you know, let's face it. The title is bullshit and with yeah. Brandon and Sam. And, and, so. it, and it's also real shit. Like I, I'm not gonna, we're not going to get on here and fucking tell people to jump in an ice bath every morning. <laughs> I, I think that's the stupidest shit. I, <laughs> I, I see it all over Instagram. I was just like, watching, um, well, you were out in, in Phoenix, too, for, yeah. for the Super Bowl, and I was out there for uh, the Fanatics party with Michael Rubin, and afterwards, I just started watching, like, his videos and, and such, and I'm not I'm not into, like, the sports world that much. That's not my thing. Like, business is my sport, so I watch other, like, business people, so to, yeah. to watch him from a business <clears throat> perspective was, was interesting, and um, these two other guys went into his house, and they were filming a podcast episode. And they were like, so like, what do you do to get motivated? Blah, blah, blah. This guy's got like a mansion and um, they're like, they're going through the mansion, whatever. And they find an ice bath in, in his house. And um, so they, they talked about it for like five minutes too. And like he, he was basically telling all the viewers to just like go jump in an ice bath. And that's how he gets motivated in the yeah. morning. Yeah. No, I, yeah. I mean, again, it's, first of all, I, I think I don't know if you're you're a young guy. You're 23. I'm 30. I, not that I'm old, but I'm older. I, I think one of the most important pieces to me being su- successful was having a mentor. Um, I, I don't think I could have done it without having, you know, somebody there to just kick me in the ass, pick me up time and time again. Mm-hmm. Um, but do, do you have do you have that person? I do. I, I have a few like mentors, not, not direct mentors in that sense, um, that maybe they look at it, the situation as like, they're my mentor or whatever. But, um, it's funny cause one of the, the questions I wanted to ask you on here was, um, what's more important to you? Is it, is it who you know or what you know? And, um, that was kind of going to be like, you know, my answer to it and, and always has been my answer to it is I think it's kind of like what comes first, the chicken or the egg. Like I think who you know is more important first and naturally from that, it's going to become what you know because yeah. knowing the right people, having that mentor, like you said, <clears throat> is going to um, teach you and, and give you, you know, those things and that that's the what you know. Yeah, I would agree with that, who you know first. Um, and then I, I, I this this kind of correlates to, to that is... Um, just like your your surroundings so like for me um you know uh, you've met my parents uh, I, my uh, you know my work ethic i think comes from I, I guess everybody in my family from my grandfather to my father's to my uncle yeah, my father's my father to my uncles mm-hmm. um 
I, I was I saw my uncle the other night. I'm like, you're addicted to working. Like, go take a fucking vacation. <laughs> and my dad, I, I was on Facebook, and his friend like posted him. Fucking, he's still like laying cement, pouring cement. Like, I I was pretty uh pretty impressed by that. Um, it's also like the Italian nature. They they don't want to fucking sit around. But yeah. Anyway, I, I think work ethic is important, and like having my company and seeing the people that uh, come through the door with all their fucking excuses. I'm just like, I always tie it back to like, that's not how I was brought up. Like I was yeah. fucking working 12 years old, filling sandbags at a balloon store, flipping pizzas, burning my fucking fingers. And I was happy as a pig and shit making two, $300 yeah. a week, 12 years old. So I think that's also important. And after that follows, you know, when you get to your adult years, who you know and what you know comes yep. comes intact. So like you say, you're, you're working, you know, all your life and just constantly, you know, doing that. And so for me, it was like, I, I think I was always an entrepreneur and it's something that like I've heard other people talk about and it's always stuck with me of like, you know, I could go play basketball, I could start practicing, but I'm never gonna be LeBron, that's just, yeah. you know, so I think entrepreneurship is a very similar concept of like, yeah. any you know, anyone can, can start a business and can go read books and learn and, and you know, pursue a business, but um, will they ever become the next Jeff Bezos or the next, you know, Mark Zuckerberg or whatever? And so that's something that I've, you know, now more recently reflected back on like my earlier years of like, I was always out shoveling snow. I was out, you know, clearing driveways. I was out raking leaves. I was lemonade stands. Like I was, I was all that growing up. Yeah. And um, even before I could actually make a dollar, I was, you know, doing little like stores as like a kid. I could just remember it. Like my parents' living room, you know, with like toys and stuff. Everything became like a, a business, you know. And um, so that kind of has translated to you know where I am now. Where now it's just like new opportunities arise like the one with your brother and it's like let's let's do it let's give it a yeah. shot you know I'm, I'm just all about staying business you know um staying busy with business and such so um like you brought up the point of of being addicted to to business and and such and so where where do you draw the line of like you know business and and work and and life and that balance like where is that to you and and what does it mean it's a good question. I mean, throughout my career, that, that answer has changed. I would say early on, um, I, I didn't. I did what it took to help help my partner keep the fucking lights on. Mm -hmm. Early on, um, uh, you know, Saturdays nights, I have I have videos of just me in the office by myself, fucking smashing a bell that <laughs> that I closed the deal. Yeah. Um, so yeah, I, I would say early on it, I did whatever it took. Um, now I, I have this mindset of like, first of all, I'm more organized. So if my calendar, if I did what I needed to do during the week, I could, you know, have a, I won't have a guilty conscience of like enjoying the weekend. Mm -hmm. Um, and, uh, yeah, I would say my scope of work is, is different. So now my work-life balance is is good but for anybody starting out that there, there is no there's no fun until you get get the bag like <laughs> straight up like uh, at least that's how i i yeah. see it work now play later Cli that's cliche but it's fucking true mm -hmm. so that, what's my view on it what is your like what is your work-life balance now is it is it nine to five five o'clock hits and you're like mentally out is it you you know are able to flip that switch on your phone because i think uh, a lot of you know my friends and, and colleagues and stuff especially in our industry because our industry is so demanding with like the events are at night you know friday saturday sunday so like that stuff has to happen no matter what to stay in business for us yeah. and so finding a way for us to balance that of like how can we balance you know having those jobs and maybe working some of them, but then also having a personal life, you know? Yeah. I mean, uh, so like your, your industry is different. We could, there is no part. I mean, there's no weekends off. Right. I mean, unless there's no parties or, or events, but, um, you asked about turning my phone off. I, I can't do that. So, so right now my responsibilities are geared towards like 
strategic partnerships, acquisitions, mm-hmm. um, in, in my world called downlining. So basically, if you are in the industry and need help, you're coming under my umbrella and I'm making a piece off of everything you do. Right. Um, so, yeah, the, there's no, I mean, my schedule, I'm at the office by nine every day and six, six thirty, I'm out, but that doesn't stop the phone from ringing. Mm-hmm. But, um, I like it. I, uh, that's like the part that I like, like after I hang up and, you know, I, I'm being told that they, their numbers are higher or they achieve their goal. Now that's the rewarding part for me. Mm-hmm. And, um. As you know, I I sold my company in 2021, and people think like people ask me all the time. They're like, "Why aren't you like on a beach?" And I'm like, <laughs> "On a beach? I'm fucking 30 years old." Mm-hmm. <laughs> um, so anyway, with the deal, we like negotiated uh, earnout periods. So there's like a three year earnout, five year earnout. So we're still like working towards a goal. Mm-hmm. And so that for me now is like the most important part because there's other people involved. It's not just the partners. Right. So like our key employees got a piece of shares and what have you. Um, so that, that is a, a motivator in itself now mm-hmm. um, to help, help the people that helped us build the company now get, get the, uh, get rewarded as well so yeah i I don't mind so um i'm I'm aware that you you know sold the company and and that story but for the viewers that are listening i guess can you give us a little bit more context of like the the timeline of like when did you actually start it how how long did that maybe take to get to that point and what was like the was it always you know we were kind of talking about this like was it always building up to that point of like you know i'm gonna sell it did you have a a deadline or a timeline for that Um, what was the you know the timeline of it yeah, so the timeline's pretty crazy. I, I actually, I I don't I never really looked at it this way. I, I guess I owe Mike uh, <laughs> some kind of favor because he put me into. I, I always knew my partner. Like we went to high school together, but mm-hmm. um, I guess Mike saw he put up a Facebook post back in 2016. Uh, put us in touch, and so I went for an interview. I started out as an agent. I got licensed. It took me fucking six times to pass the test, but I did it. Mm-hmm. Um, I had never sold really like anything at up at that point, and so everything was over the phone. Turns out I'm pretty good at it. Uh, so that was 2016, 2017. I would say by 2018, mm-hmm. my partner realized like, all right. He's good at this. And from there, I realized myself that I could teach people how Mm -hmm. to just make a carbon copy of myself, I guess. Mm -hmm. And um, again, the mentorship from from him. uh, I keep calling him Vincent. His name's Vinny. I call him Vinny. (laughs) Um, He he brought me in as a partner. So I I didn't put up any capital at that time. Uh, I think it was like 5%. And... From there, you asked about strategy. Like, yeah, we, we always talked about just doing shit the right way. We always mm-hmm. have. And just keep on, you know, moving the needle. And one day, somebody would come in and look look to acquire. Right. And um, I would say, I think in 2019, I it, it was time to put up. So I, I took a loan from my mom. Mm-hmm. So I also owe her big time <laughs> as well. Um, got some additional equity and, you know, at that point, this is, this is a good, good talking point as well. Like it's very easy to spend other people's money, but when you start putting up your, your own dollar Mm -hmm. or, you know, your, your family money, you start to care just a little bit more. A little bit. (laughs) Um, so I think at that point, it's like where I, I buckled in and was like, all right, I got to do everything I can to make this work. Uh, and we did. And so seven years late, six years later, we, we went through the acquisition with with uh, a large institution by mm-hmm. the name of Alliant. Um, and yeah, that's that's really the story. <laughs> yeah. So there were some other, you know, 
perks to the acquisition. I mean, we, we got introduced to some bigger names and, and people that we're dealing with now. Actually, one of our partners sent me to the Super Bowl with, you know, Vinny and I to the Super Bowl. That, that's when we connected. Right, right. You, uh, you, you got to hang with Jay-Z and you left me behind. But, <laughs> uh, yeah, you, how, how, was, uh, how was Phoenix for you? I had a great time. Yeah, so uh, in a similar way of, you know, I guess time back to like the, the who you know thing. That's how you were out there. Same reason I was out there. Um, my buddy Simon from Brand Activation Services um, has a very successful corporate event production company. And he does a lot of uh, fabrication and, and design work and stuff. So he w- does a lot of the work for Fanatics. And uh, Michael Rubin, like I mentioned before, and that's why um, that's why we were out there, and that's why he was out there. So he had brought me and, and Danny from my team out to assist with um, some installation help and just kind of be out there as well. So we got to we weren't at the actual Super Bowl like you were, but um, we got to be out there for that week and just kind yeah. of see the city transform into everything Super Bowl, all the buildings getting wrapped and whatever. So it was a pretty wild experience. Like you said, we got to be at the Fanatics party with some yeah. pretty incredible uh, celebrities and, and people. But um, so you were out there for just the game or? Um, yeah. So we, it was the game, but we got into like all the pre parties and whatnot. Okay. So you I were was out actually on Saturday? Ha- what? You flew out on Saturday? Or um, before the game? Friday, I think. Friday, okay. if I remember Friday, yeah. I don't know if you saw, but I was I was hanging out with Cher. No, I didn't. Yeah, she was uh, she was like in my VIP areas okay. with her. I don't know the guy's name, but he's also famous. And then also, uh, I want to say Trey Song. I, I don't know some some other rapper, but okay. I'm not like totally into rap, so I had no idea. But apparently, he was like right in front of me. Okay. And anyway, I was telling my family, I'm like. Uh, I was like, I'm in front of Cher. <laughs> like, I Googled him. She's 76 years old. I'm like, what the fuck is she doing here? <laughs> I wanted to, <laughs> At like... a VIP table. Yeah, I wanted to go up to her so bad. Like, Do you believe? <laughs> <laughs> I didn't have the balls, but... Were yeah. they just, like... Were they just, like, hanging out? Or could you, like, notice that they were, like, at the edge of their seats with their profile? and She did, she did not look like she wanted to be there. Um, but, yeah, they were just hanging out. I, I, I don't, They must have, like, some kind of, I don't know, commitment to, Which like, party was this? This was... Uh, this was, like, in an airport hangar. Okay. Yeah. Uh, it was at night. Okay. Um, yeah, I, I don't even know how... I, I guess one of the guys I was with... Had a had an in, inside okay. connect, but yeah, I'm sure there were other people around me that I had no idea who they are. I'm yeah. I'm kind of a, not oblivious, but I don't really pay attention to who's famous and who's right, right. not. What's well, that? Michael Rubin is a sports guy. He you know yeah. fanatics owns like Phil, uh, tops and Sixers. Yeah, Sixers yeah. is his big team. So, uh, but I think he recently sold it. Um, he still has some involvement, but I think he sold it. I was watching in a podcast because um, because he took over tops trading cards now oh wow you're not allowed to own a team and you know sell trading cards or own a that's trading card company um or maybe it was the sports book because he just started a sports betting i think that's what it was not the trading card but um because now he's Which involved one was that? with um i think it's like the fanatics sports book oh. or something but we'll, we'll get we'll get into that down yeah. down the road in See, our like, journey sports. i'm not a sports guy so like sit in the same way I'm, I'm at this party and like People are pointing people out. They're like, that's the owner of the Jets. That's so and so. And I'm like, oh, that's cool. Like, yeah, he's got a green hat. I believe you, you know. But like, I'm not, I'm not a sports guy, so I wouldn't recognize these people. Meanwhile, the artists that are there, like chain smokers, like you said, Jay-Z was there. Like, oh, we wow. walked up to the bar, Jay Bobbin is there. Like we were there setting up in the morning. Jay Bobbin's up on the stage, sound checking and like sweatpants and a hoodie. Like wow. it was so you know. Did, did you get to speak to Ruben like directly? We didn't. Um, he walked past like a few times. I think he said hi to uh, like our buddy Mikey who was out there shooting video. But um, I didn't speak to him directly. He kind of came in, did his lap to make sure everything was in yeah. check. And then, you know, yeah, left, I was but. just curious about that because I, I think it's amazing. I mean, you're, you're such a young guy and like to be able to get in front of these people and, and communicate and have conversations like you have to have, you know, confidence. And I mean, just I mean, you're, you're, you're doing a good job here. You're making me look bad, but, uh, no, I, I just think it, I, I was curious cause to, to get in front of big, big names and you know, it doesn't even need to be celebrities, but you need to present well. And I think you do that. And like I said, it's pretty, uh, pretty impressive at such a young age. Thank you. Um, yeah, Super Bowl was, I, I was, you telling me about, uh, Ruben and, and his investment, 
we'll uh i have that on the schedule to get into my uh my track record and experiences with sports, with sports betting yeah. I, I don't know if you caught wind of that at all but um some some good stories bad mm. in between um I gave up that life, but we'll we'll, we'll get to that in uh, <laughs> a future enough. episode. So the uh, you were there live. I watched Super Bowl from uh, you know a TV, which people always say like it's better to watch from a TV. So I'm curious, like, is this your first time being at the Super Bowl? Yeah, okay. first, hopefully not the last. Okay. <laughs> Next year's in Vegas. That that that'll be a little much, but uh, definitely better to watch on TV. Yeah, yeah. It, it I mean, it was just a lot. Like, yeah. I couldn't look. I was going to say, it's got to just be the experience of like being there. It's, it can't be the, you're not actually seeing the plays close up. You're not seeing everything like <laughs> it's you funny you on say TV, that. you know? It's funny you say that because at the game, I'm like, holy fuck, it's the fourth quarter already. Like the shit <laughs> went by in a flash, but you know, you're watching at home. You know, also the first probably half. drinking since 10 a.m. Right? Yeah, yeah, <laughs> yeah, exactly. Um, yeah, I, I would, I would say it's better to watch it on TV, on TV, yeah. but the experience in itself is, is worth it. Mm -hmm. Um, yeah. Hmm. Yeah. It's interesting. I, you know, I, I'm not a being, you know, out of touch with the sports thing to me, watching those games kind of drags on sometimes. I'm like, okay, <laughs> like, you know, they're just running back and forth on the field. And, um, so the halftime show is what always catches my attention. And I think that being there, for me, it would be really cool to see that happen, to see that yeah. come out so quickly and be set up and such, you know, because um, this year's halftime show was very interesting. So how was that? I guess being in the stadium too, like seeing that with, you know, her coming down from like the ceiling and stuff, was that anything crazy or was it just? Um, so because of Mike, I've, I've watched wrestling my whole life. So like seeing people come from the ceiling or <laughs> fucking flying across the stadium is not like yeah. super like astonishing to me. Um, but yeah, it was cool. I, I just thought it was funny. Like afterwards, people were commenting like that she wasn't fucking doing backflips. I'm like, she's <laughs> pregnant. Like I think she did a great job for, for being pregnant. Yeah. I, I know I don't think a lot of women would even be out there. So, mm -hmm. uh, kudos to her. Not, not like she's going to hear that, but, um, yeah, I heard no, something it, interesting about the halftime performances actually that, um, I don't think they actually get paid to perform. I just heard this and, and read like a document about it that they don't get, they, they get all their expenses covered. They get, you know, to be there and I'm sure they get like tickets for family or whatever, but like they don't actually get paid to perform. It's just kind of like a, I guess like a portfolio thing to them that like makes it worth it. Like. Uh, I thought that was a little crazy. I don't know about that. Well, I, Billy, you're going to have to fact check that one because I think I saw something that like somebody turned down some money for the Super Bowl or maybe to perform. A, yeah. Maybe a different event. Hmm. Anyway, I'm curious now. Well, that's how we're going to start next episode is we're going to come back with All the right. truth on that because so give me some time to research. Yeah, research it and let me know. Before we get to the end of this week's podcast, um, what do you think of the end of the Super Bowl? Were you happy with the the outcome? Yeah, well, like I said, I gave up my uh, career of sports betting at that time. Um, Did so you have any money in the game or no? No, no, no. It was uh, the rubber met the road. Oh, sorry. <laughs> is, that, is, that, is that right? What's the fucking saying? I haven't heard yeah, that the rubber, the rubber met the, rubber the, road. Met the road. So, uh, yeah, I gave up that life. So, no, no money on the game. But I could tell you that a lot of people lost money because mm -hmm. the Eagles were favored. Mm -hmm. um, <clears throat> so... Yeah, I mean, Pat Mahomes, I mean, you know who that is, right? I do know who that is. <laughs> I know that name. <laughs> uh, yeah, I, I, thought it, I thought it was, a, I mean, what was it, 38, 35 or something like that? It was close, yeah. Um, so it was the right game to be at. Mm -hmm. Before the game, I was like, I hope it's not a blowout. And uh, definitely wasn't that. So next year, you'll you'll be in Vegas. You'll be next at the year, game, I'm going to pay too. attention to the, the teams a little bit more, too, so I can... But I, I had some money on it, but um, I, I put most on, on the Eagles, too. So, yeah. but is what it is. Um, so that's a wrap to this week's. Um, thank you guys for watching BSing with BNS. And um, looking forward to future episodes. You know, I'm hoping we can bring some value. We're coming up on like the 30 minute mark. So I want to just kind of wrap up, keep these, keep these short and interesting with, you know, a little bit of bullshit, a little bit of value for, uh, for our listeners. 
on their daily commute while they're driving to work on their lunch break, that kind of thing. So, um, looking forward to maybe we'll do like a live episode at one point. We'll invite some people to, you know, watch live and yeah. ask us <clears throat> questions. Um, absolutely. That's been a, a request already. So we got to find a cool like venue for that. We got to go live from like a coffee shop or a bar yeah. or something, but, um, we'll do live. We'll do like, if anyone has any particular topics that they want to hear now, you know, drop them in the comments and, uh, definitely let us know. We'll, we'll expand on any of that, whether it's, uh, in the BS category or the, the business category. And, yeah. um, we'll bring some guests on too. Let's bring some other, you know, business oriented people, some yeah. maybe sports oriented people and let's bring some guests on. And, and I've got, brands. I've got a couple people, uh, already inquired. So we'll, we'll get to that. I th I'm, I'm looking forward to that. Sweet. Sounds good. We'll wrap up this week's episode and, uh, we'll see you on the next one. Thanks guys. Cool.